Hello everybody and welcome. I'm your host, Captain Awesomeness, and as promised to you guys today, we are going to go over breaking down this chassis. As a reminder guys, real quick, this is a Burrell Art AM29 chassis, specifically designed for the L0206 motor that I have talked to you guys about in the past. And before I do begin guys, do me a favor, please hit thumbs up, please subscribe, and please hit that notification bell icon so you're made aware of whenever I upload my next video. Anyway, before we do begin guys, what I am going to do today is specifically take out the um, extremities, so to say, of the go-kart. And by that really, I mean the bumpers up in the front and back, the nose fairing, the wheels over here, just the wheels by themselves, I'll worry about the hubs later, and then the seat. The idea is that as and when I take these things off, I want you to be able to see what the chassis on the inside eventually looks like. This is going to be a multi-part series, so the idea is just for you to see how simple yet a little complicated this chassis can be. Okay, before we begin guys, we do need to make sure that we do have the right and proper tools for this. Uh, so with that, first of all, we can do it right and do it right the first time and then do it safely. So uh, first and foremost, you want to make sure you have something that has a little bit more than human strength. Uh, a simple impact wrench like this uh, electric piece that I got from uh, Home Depot. Uh, that uh, should give you enough of a torque uh, if you need to kind of loosen up some of the nuts and bolts that we'll run into. Along with that, uh, you need to have a 10 mil millimeter socket, a 13 millimeter socket, a couple of extensions just in case you need to reach bolts or nuts that uh, simply are a little out, out of reach, you know, by uh, using the simple uh, short stubby here. Uh, a 13 millimeter wrench you'll need or a 14 as well, as well as uh, uh, a uh, ratchet uh, in case uh, you need a little bit of an easier twisting power. You need a set of pliers, uh, then just a little screwdriver with a flathead and a Phillips uh, head on the other side, a mallet to help motivate things along, and then of course, just to make sure that you don't lose any of your parts, a little small or large, whatever you have, magnetic tray, and uh, a little shop rag, if in case you're not using gloves like me and you need to kinda clean things off. And not only that, just to also inspect the chassis if in case you see something that's suspect, like a crack in the weld or whatever, uh, and then of course the most important thing guys the gloves, you know, the gloves uh, as a safety uh, thing, not just about, you know, making sure your hands are clean. I uh, think that's it's pretty important to make sure you have all your fingers uncut or uninjured. So uh, pretty good thing to have. And then of course, a little bit of eye protection, even though we're not doing anything that's gonna make sparks fly out, but still, it's always good to be safe than sorry. With that said, let's get going. Okay, first things first, what we're going to do is take out the front bumper. As you see over here, there's two clips, one on each side, and they're pretty simple to uh, basically work off of this uh, particular area so what you're supposed to do is just simply lift up on this side lift up on that side which has already kind of worked its way out and you'll see the bumper with a little bit of help will come right off and that is as simple as that so we're gonna put that to the side okay on the rear of the bumper it is a little bit more complicated but not complicated so as to uh, make it difficult. All you have is on both sides, you see this bracket right here? This bracket is being held to the bumper via this little connection and the idea is to try to get this nut and bolt uh, on one side of the bracket and another one that's on the other side that you can't see. Both are 13 millimeters uh, on the nut side and then on the other side you have an Allen key and you'll need a size 6 key over here as I have demonstrated for you and all you do is just hold on to the one side uh, on here and then on the other side all you're doing is using this little uh, socket the 13 millimeter socket and you're going to use a little short stubby extension now if in case this does not work out for you because of the depth of the stud what you can do instead is use like a, a ratcheting uh, tool like a ratcheting uh, wrench or just a simple wrench so what we're going to do for this side is just uh, do exactly that so by holding onto the one side with our wrench here, a 13 millimeter size again, we're going to twist the other side once I get a good grasp of it. And all you're doing is twisting like this here. 
Now before you completely take everything off, make sure that you don't take the entire nut off. Why? Because we still have to work on the other side. So just have that there uh, in per, on, uh, we just have that there in case it uh, decides to kind of move on us. But we will conclude by doing the other side and removing the nut and bolt assembly. This will drop on you, so you just make sure that uh, it doesn't just completely crash to the ground. Just place it like this. So this way you can get to that one hanger that I left there just in case. And as I mentioned to you guys, because everything is off now, you just want to make sure that you put the nut right back to where it belongs. So this way you don't lose it. I'll do the same for the other side as well. Okay, with the front and back removed now, we're going to simply take off the side pods on both sides and they're going to be even more simple. As a matter of fact, all I'm doing is there's this little spring here and it's got just enough of a hook for you to kind of work uh, out of the, um, the little hole that it is in. So I'll do this real quick. You will need a set of pliers to do this just to kind of help uh, things out. But all you're doing is just pulling back just like that. And that will take this side pot off completely. Yeah, it needs to be cleaned. All right, we go around to the other side and do the same thing. Pull it right out and take it off. Okay, with the bumpers taken off and the side pods gone, now we're going to focus on the wheels. Again, all you need is a 10 millimeter socket, a uh, extension, and of course, our little trusty impact tool. So let's begin that process. With the nut and bolt out of the way, this is as simple as it should be. This comes right off. If you have difficulty, you might have to wiggle it a little bit, but let's uh, continue on to the rest. And just as before, guys, after we've taken all the wheels off, make sure you put your nuts back in so you do not forget them. All right, now it's the turn of the nose fairing to come off. It's also a pretty simple process. We've got this little clip-on deal up here on both sides and then a little nut and bolt on the front side of it. So it's as simple as getting a 13 millimeter wrench and then a 13 millimeter socket and uh, kind of going to work to town on the bottom side first. So that's where we will begin. And once you've got the nut loose enough, you can just hand loosen it down, take it out, take the front part out along with the washer. You don't want to lose any of this stuff. And then you can just simply put it back into the hole right under the nose fairing, again, so that you don't lose any of this stuff. All right, the top of the nose fairing is pretty simple. We just take out this little, um, uh, what we call this, uh, cotter pin. There's a little grommet here, but you're gonna just work on getting that out of the way. Maybe try to pull, there we go. Just as simple as that, that grommet will stay there. And uh, as before, yet again, and I'll keep saying this, we are going to put that cotter pin right back in place and we'll do the other side real quick. And that's how you get your nose fairing out. Okay, now we're going to work on a uh, semi-difficult uh, part of this uh, breakdown in today's episode. Uh, what we're going to do is take the seat out, and in order for us to do that, we have a total of six uh, areas that we need to address within the seat. Now, uh, there is just this part which you can barely see uh, sticking out. That's where, um, basically, it's the main area where the seat is attached to the chassis. And then in the back, you see the silver piece. This is the seat strut. This is also attached to this chassis and uh, specifically it goes into where the axle sits. Uh, I know you can't see it but basically you want to make sure that on the chassis end this seat strut is um, loosened up via the nut over there so that when you do take out everything you can actually move this silver uh, seat strut all the way back in order to make sure you can clear it when you get out of there. Uh, again in this case we're going to need a set of Allen uh, tool, which is again this here. Uh, I believe it's also a number six this time, I, and I think I am correct. Yep, I am. On the other side is a 13 millimeter nut, and all you're doing is going to hold on 
to that 13 millimeter um, nut on the one side and just try to undo it from the uh, Allen key side or if you have enough clearance you can do it you know from the nut side it just all depends on you now if it is a little too tough to um, do just be patient with it don't try to force anything because the last thing you want is either for your tools or the actual you know nut or bolt to break uh, this is being just a little difficult and that's fine I mean again this has seen some race time but anyway we will remove the top portion that uh, the seat is attached uh, to the strut uh, to. All right, we've got the nut out. We're going to try to promote this uh, Allen key to come out. And if it doesn't, you just need to work it a little bit more. It will undo itself uh, as it works through the hole. And once you have it out of the way completely, you'll know when it's time for it to come out. It'll just come out in your hand. Uh, there's a little washer on it as well, so you need to be careful. Oh, the washer. Here we go. Just to show you guys, we have both the washer on the other side as well as the bolt. And then on this side, we have the nut. So we're, as I said before, we're going to get this seat strut out of the way. And before you remove the strut on the left side of it, uh, you just have to remember that it is attached to the brake caliber sprocket. So you just want to loosen it up enough so that you can work this uh, seat support out of the way. And now you're basically done trying to do uh, the seat strut side. You're going to repeat the same uh, thing that I just did on the um, uh, middle section. All right, now we're gonna work on the underside of this chair or seat. And uh, this is also a pretty simple removal, at least I hope it is. <laughs> uh, I say that because it's a little different, just slightly different than uh, the Margate chassis that I've worked on for my team. So it uh, just looks like it's a 13 millimeter nut on this side. There's a little bit of a spacer to make sure that the driver sits at the proper ride height. Now that driver is taller than me, so maybe that's why they had it. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to make sure that uh, I put it back together the way I see it just in case. So anyway, let's go ahead and remove this side. Once you remove the nut, you want to make sure that when you take the bolt out that none of the other stuff that uh, is attached uh, to or sitting with the bolt uh, comes out uh, and falls everywhere. So you just take out the top and slowly, slowly let it work into your hand. So. Uh, as I've been doing otherwise also, I am going to try to remember how it all works. I think I do know how. And we're gonna put it all inside of the seat so we don't lose any of this and then we'll work the other side out so that we can remove the entire seat. All right, with all the bolts out of the way and checking that there is nothing else that's going to get in the way, we simply lift up and remove the chair out of the way or the seat. I keep saying chair, I don't know why. So the last thing left to do is to take our steering wheel. Now there's a couple ways to do this. There is this little, um, well, double uh, nut and uh, bolt piece that you can work on where you basically uh, loosen this up and take the entire uh, steering wheel setup out. Or you can do uh, these uh, Allen keys here where then this little uh, adapter piece, I suppose if you want to call that, uh, will remain behind for our uh, steering wheel. Uh, I'm going to choose to actually take the entire assembly out because again, we are going to start to clean uh, this as and when we uh, completely take it down to a bare chassis. So let's go ahead with that. And now here there are two nuts. So I'm going to loosen up the first one. And then the second one. We are going to remove the bolt that's holding it in. Might have to twist it around a little bit. Just unscrew it. And you might have to put a little bit of effort to get the steering wheel off. Things don't always work out the right way. Bring out the mallet. Well, there you go. A little bit of forceful work, but uh, nothing that would damage anything. So I suppose that is the bright side to what we just did there. 
Okay guys, that was pretty simple. So far so good, no issues. I didn't run into any difficulties at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, what uh, I did uh, find surprising was how easy every bolt was to take out. There was no rust uh, on any of them. None of them were frozen in, so real happy about that. But this does conclude what we have going on for you today. In the next episode, we will be focusing on removing the fuel tank, the engine, uh, the axle along with the chain and the uh, brake setup and then we'll see if we have capacity to do any more later on. Of course, as a reminder, as in when I do this, I will also talk a little bit about um, some maintenance stuff, some upkeep stuff that you might wanna know, especially with regards to addressing any kind of surface rust, uh, some lubrication, uh, just things to look out for. Um, but uh, really the uh, main thing about any chassis that you work on, uh, either if you buy it brand new or um, you know even used for that matter, you wanna make sure that you, uh, as and when you clean everything up, you're looking for any signs of wear, such as a crack in the weld or any kind of major dense and if that is the case you can take uh, the cart or the chassis actually uh, over to the uh, people who uh, perform uh, some kind of you know body straightening stuff see if they can kind of uh, salvage anything if it needs to be but again I've been pretty lucky this is a pretty solid chassis so far I have nothing to complain about actually um, and then in the end state as I mentioned to you guys before once everything is taken out this is just the bare chassis which is basically everything you see in red we are then going to either uh, well, decide on whether we want to paint uh, this whole thing or we want to, um, you know, I don't know, just uh, maybe uh, clean it all up and uh, see what we want to do for uh, the stickers on our uh, side pods and uh, bumper. So, uh, yeah, still a lot of things to do. Anyway, guys, that will end this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you at the next Apex. Bye-bye.